um, and see if we can trick them that way. And I think the other thing is that we're busy. Um, a lot of studies are showing that two to three times a week, most of our families are eating out at restaurants. The portion sizes at restaurants, the um, variety of foods, the caloric density, fat density, salt intake at restaurant foods is not the best. So it's kind of the opposite of the economy in that people are having to spend money to eat out, but that money is not being very well spent. So it's a matter of encouraging kids to go into a restaurant meal knowing they're bringing half of it home. Um, you're not meant to eat the whole meal right now, um, and you'll have the other half of it tomorrow, just to try and change the mindset like that. Uh, and then the other thing that um, is dear to my heart, and obviously Eliza has lots of ideas too, um, I'd love to hear them, is just recess. The uh, Providence Children's Museum has been a tremendous advocate um, in this area, and the kids need to move. It's not only what's going in the body, but they aren't even having a chance to move. There are studies that show that if kids do 15 jumping jacks before they take a test, they do better on the test. So they need to have full bellies, they need to have bellies that are full of good food, good protein that's going to help their brain to continue to go well and not a Dunkin' Donuts that's going to cause them to have a crash in 20 minutes. Um, but they need to be able to move and work off all that energy. Eliza, can you share with us? Yeah, like uh, Dr. Lane said, there, I don't think there is, you know, that one thing that caused the epidemic. It's, it's a huge problem and I think there have been a lot of factors. One of the things that I feel has kind of happened is that Unhealthy options have kind of become the default options. So if you think about um, when everyone here was kids, how many of you guys walked to school? Did a lot of you guys walk to school? How many of your kids walk to school now? Not that many. So routine physical activity is kind of, you know, fallen by the wayside. Kids are taking the bus. Um, computers, computer games, computer stuff, virtual stuff is kind of replacing the time that kids used to spend outdoors playing. Um, some kids are living in neighborhoods that aren't really all that safe, either from crime or from traffic, to be able to go outside and play. So those kids are probably spending more time indoors. Uh, budgets are tight. When schools have to cut some things, a lot of times it's PE, so you know, there we lose that or we lose recess. Um, homework is kind of going up. Parents are busy. There's less and less time for kids to run around and just be kids playing and just getting regular, not even structured physical activity. On the food end of things, unhealthy foods are way cheaper and way more prevalent than some of the healthy things, especially for families that need the kind of quick, um, quick stuff. So yeah, you can still definitely be able to learn how to shop on a budget and get some really healthy things for a low cost, but the prep time and the preparation time, it's, it's going to take a little bit more. Um, portion sizes are huge, and um, one of the things that I notice a lot now is that I clip a lot of coupons, I look for a lot of deals, I can get great deals on things like two-for-one Pop-Tarts and cheeses, but you never see like a 10 for 10 on bunches of bananas or a two-for-one on, you know, grapes. So I think in some ways people are kind of seeing all of these things and, you know, looking for deals and shopping for as much as they can get on their budget and these things are right out in front of you. I just think that it's, we're kind of at the point where unhealthy choices are easier to make than healthy choices. And that's hard. Thank you. Uh, Dorothy and Frank, I don't know if you have anything you'd like to add to that equation that's creating the problem. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I can understand what uh, both these young ladies said, and I see it every day. I mean, I live it every day. I've been doing this for, I'm not going to tell you how many years, I'm going to tell you how old I am. I get this. But nevertheless, you see it constantly, and I guess the, the you know, unfortunately, I mean, people raise their hand that they walk to school. We have situations there that won't even allow kids to walk across the street to school for obvious reasons. Um, from a social economic standpoint, I work for corporations. I develop food products and, you know, as a separate contractor. And in this economy, uh, in order to make food taste better, high salt intake, high fat intake drives the price lower. Uh, you know how many college kids that I see on an everyday basis that live on ramen noodles? Three times a day, seven days a week, for four years. So, you know, how does that, so that equate something? You know, how many college kids you know, can drive around in a, in a flash car and go in nice restaurants? And portion sizes are bigger. The chefs that I work with tell me big people complain that flesh you overload because they want to take the remaining property home. And everyone in this room probably that is not to a restaurant. I don't go to many restaurants, I'll be honest with you. Because I can't eat that much food. I mean, I can eat like everybody else, but it's just overbearing in, in, in some of these things. And the only thing I would add is um, just the pervasive marketing of 
branding foods that are high in fat, high in sodium, high in sugar, and that's what our kids know. That's all they know. And, and, and we've become a society that, that asks our children, what do you want? Well, at two years old, the child has a vocabulary of food that's chicken nugget and french fry, because that's what's been marketed to them. So stop asking and start giving different options to those children. Um, so that we can combat some of those marketing forces. So Dorothy, if I might ask you to, to stay on point and, and uh, go to the second question. So how does the environment that children live and grow up in, culture, neighborhood, schools, impact the choices or lack of choices to choose what they eat? And what are some ways to change or influence those individually unique environments? Okay, well this is one that's very near and dear to my heart because um, I believe in the power of the environments that within which we have control. We, the public, should and do have control over what is fed um, and uh, what behaviors are role modeled um, with our children. And first and foremost is our school systems. Um, an environment that 14, 15 years ago, uh, when my children were in elementary school, um, or a little longer, <laughs> but uh, when they were in elementary school, I couldn't find a healthy food item. Um, I was doing chef demonstrations, like uh, Frank has done for many years, and, and realized that children in Burrowville, a middle-income community um, where many parents were still home at the time, or moms, but, but a community where children couldn't identify a grapefruit and they'd never seen them before. Um, they could identify a lemon because that's the picture on Starburst. Um, and I realized, <laughs> I realized that they didn't know that carrots came out of the ground. They didn't know that apples grew on a tree. So um, this was disturbing, and none of these foods were available to them in their school meal program. And our school meal program is federally funded. It's publicly funded by us. So. Um, the environment was actually teaching bad habits. We were raising a generation of children, and we may have raised more than one generation of children that learned bad habits and practiced bad habits in the environment where they were being, they were learning and were being cared for. So to me, it was tremendous opportunity. We have our children in school for 12 years, 180 days a year, six hours a day. That's a tremendous opportunity to give our children the knowledge as well as the opportunity to practice healthy eating and physical activity every single day. So why can't we do this? You know, in childcare, places where children are cared for. Adults are in charge. It's an opportunity to, again, teach and give the opportunity to practice healthy eating. So it's an amazing opportunity to um, give our children that um, basis for, from which they now have are empowered with the knowledge and the, the practice to, to make healthier choices as adults and also to be more discriminating as to what's being marketed to them versus the choices that they should and, and hopefully will make over a lifetime. So we have, you know, we bred schools and childcare and other institutions like hospitals really do breed American culture, so it's a tremendous opportunity to reshape American culture through, again, the teaching and the opportunity to practice every day. Thank you. Frank, what's your take on the environment? Yeah, I, I agree with Dorothy, too. What, what happens, uh, I was talking to someone this morning, and you send your kids to school uh, at a young age, obviously, so they learn ABC. And when they come home, the parents are there to do the remainder of the alphabet. While in school, we have these wonderful programs, these kids' first programs, uh, the chef moves to school programs. Unless the kids are reinforced uh, when they get home to have this, I mean, I did a presentation. You probably heard of the chefs move to school. I did a presentation. I live in Cranston, so I did a school in Cranston. I agreed. So I walk in and figure out I'm going to talk to a bunch of kids. 400 kids sitting on the floor waiting for me. <laughs> and the day, I, I, I don't know what to say. The words are, what do I say? Um, and it was interesting because demographics have a lot to do with it. And 99% of those kids knew exactly what I was talking about. And I was trying to bring it down to their level about yogurts and, and, and different vegetables. So they, 
That has a lot to do with the demographics um, working and depending on. I've done other schools, I've done schools and nothing against it, but I've done schools in the city of Providence. I would bring into like 10 schools in the city. And it's pretty interesting to see how that ranges. And of course, environmentally, yes, but still they have to, the reinforcement has to be kept when they go home. Uh, the parents are going to continue, or someone's going to continue to make something that these kids are going to enjoy and make something healthy. You know, healthy eating, you know, going to a, I'm not thinking on it, I'm not <coughs> labeling, people go to stop and shop or Whole Foods, I mean, I live in all of those places. But a carrot, in the carrot, is a carrot. Okay, whether it's organic, well, maybe because it's not done with pesticides, it still has the same nutritional value. So to make this simple, you don't have to make things elegant. I mean, simple carrots, fresh peas. I buy everything as far as I can get fresh. I will not eat certain things at certain times of day because to me they're, they're not they're not.